two minutes yep. early. We love a queen who's early. Oh, we hi. Go. Hi. How are you? Hello. And I was like, uh-oh, am I on mute? No, I've got this, right? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Great. How are you guys? Good. We've just been made conversation about a party the other night, which was very chaotic. A chaotic party. Sounds awesome. Yeah, it was. I love how <laughs> early you are. We're usually uh -huh. like really early. <laughs> Me, I'm always, I would have gone on earlier. I'm always early. I have like an anxiety about being late always in everything in life. Like I'll get, my whole life, I'd rather be sitting 30 minutes before it starts sitting outside somewhere than like being late. That is literally, yes, that is me. So I do that all, all the time. The... He's still watching Private Eye, so I've tried to avoid spoilers. Oh my God. Are you serious? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's funny because I was like, Am I going to remember everything? Like, it seems like it was a lifetime ago now. It does for me as well. Aww. Yeah. I still I still got my drawing on the wall that my friend done of us. Aww, so cute. Yeah, I was going to bring it with us, but then I decided to forget. <laughs> Would have been a nice little addition just behind you. I know. Your shoulder. Oh, behind me is just kids stuff because my office is now a playroom for my daughter. So, yeah, that is a rocking unicorn. Yes, it is. That is so cool. Awesome. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way, because I don't even think I've got a chance to say that. I don't know if you did. I don't know anything. I've been so out of the loop and like really busy and not really good at being an online presence anymore that I've, it just all seemed really overwhelming and I had a kid. And so I've really not been good at Twitter or Instagram of late. You literally abandoned your Twitter, I think. <laughs> I just remember it was like two years ago and then nothing ever again. We're like, okay. Yeah, pretty much. Because I think it was fun when we were all part of the show. And then it's like, it gets, I know that sounds weird, but like, you have so much to talk about and then you just have nothing to talk about. And then you're, you're, everything just kind of switches to, my everyday life of like taking care of a baby and doing laundry. <laughs> I think I should, I should probably get started because I, I don't mind you... the other day, so it's my turn. Yeah. Right. Welcome to the Double L show. And this is so exciting for us. And we'll have Cindy Sampson here, who is my quote bestie, even though you, you said it first. <laughs> So we'll get started on some questions. True. Okay. True or false? Andy had the most savage banter. True. Absolutely true. <laughs> Definitely. Like every time you watch it, like, what? How? How she got away with some comments. I loved her. Um how would you describe the character of Angie and what drew you to her? Well, speaking of banter, uh, like even in the audition side, when I read it, um, I just loved her sarcasm. I thought she was hilarious. I thought there was like this humor to her and I thought she was so amazing. But also I was drawn not, not just to Angie. I was drawn to the whole premise of the show, which was like, a new caper every week. We got to wear disguises. We had accents. We got to dress up and go undercover. And I was like, that's so cool. This is my dream job. You get to play a million characters in one. And then because of time and budget, a lot of those things fell by the wayside. We didn't end up doing as many disguises. And I feel like we did more so in season one. But, you know, I loved Angie. I thought she was charming. And I think whenever I did interviews after, I was always supposed to say things like she was tough and she was a lone wolf. But I always thought she was just like charming and hilarious and funny and a little bit awkward even yeah. at times. She was just guarded. You know what I mean? She just had her guard up at yeah. times. Um, but like super endearing. Yeah. How hilarious. alike are you and her? Mm. It felt very easy to play her. And I always used to think that Angie and I were very much alike. But looking back on it all, I think she was much cooler than me and definitely more educated. So there's that. 
what was the casting process like? Oh, the casting process. Well, I think it was long and difficult, but I wasn't really part of it because they didn't see me for anything. And then I know that they looked for a very long time for Angie. And I actually helped one of my friends read for the part. And when we're talking about the banter, I was like, oh, I just kind of got it. Like I kind of got her humor right away. And I was like, oh, I know what I would do with this. And then I think it was probably two months later, I actually got to audition and I put myself on tape. Like I didn't even go in the room and then I got a chemistry test. And I, the next thing I know, I'm like in a room with Jason Priestley. And chemistry tests are super weird. Have you ever done a chemistry test? No, but I feel no. like I should do one because we've just been casting for my TV show. So really okay yeah. So the thing about chemistry tests from an actor's perspective i would say and this is just my experience it's very weird because you feel like your entire future and job hangs on whatever happens in the room in this meeting so it's like it's like this horrible desperate feeling of like you wanting it to work well but you just can't you then you have no control over those things and it's also weird because chemistry sometimes people have great chemistry when they meet and they get to know each other and it they don't like each other Sorry, my earrings are making funny noises here. And sometimes people don't have any chemistry at all, but then it grows with time, you know? So it's like, it's such an odd thing. Anyway, after doing so many chemistry tests in my life and being like super, I won't say nervous, but just they're nerve wracking. Um, I decided to not care at all because you can't have any control over it. And I just remember Jason and I laughing. Like we just laughed. I was just myself, went in there, laughed I don't even remember what about and then we just ended up laughing for another five years together so I think it worked out well <laughs> definitely did I just couldn't see anybody else in the roles thank you yeah we can neither no you know just fit so well very well together yeah um this is a weird one but it's something that I picked up on as somebody who studied media did you know that in the opening sequence, Angie's dress is actually blue, but in the episode that it's from, the little clip, it's red. What? What dress? Oh my gosh, wait. No, okay. A, I didn't know that, nor can I even think of what dress it is. I'm going to look at this afterwards. Do you have photo evidence? Um, I don't think I do. Mm. I just can't remember what season that clip's from but I noticed it straight away when I was watching and I was like you're like this what? is wrong yeah you know what they color time things after the fact so I wouldn't put it past somebody having changed something I don't know yeah I'm gonna investigate this I'm gonna investigate this gotta love continuity <laughs> yeah <laughs> Actually, continuity no things are, happen. yeah, right? I love continuity gaps. It's very funny to see them. Yeah, there'll be a lot in half of my stuff, the amount of delays that goes on. It's funny because you don't think about it at the time and then it's blaringly obvious after the fact, but it's all just human error. We're, we can only do so much. I think, I remember one time, because you shoot everything out of sequence, I remember that I had curly hair and I was shooting the same scene and it was straight. Like my hair went from curly to straight in the same scene. <laughs> Lots of people, like we've seen quite a few shows with that happening. Yeah, yeah right? What was the hair? That's what I find. It's always like the hair that changes without people realizing. I don't know. I think it's because you do it so many days after. Like sometimes you film a scene and like the second part of the scene maybe, or the same day, your same look. It's filmed months apart because you're in, we do all the block shooting. So all the studio, just for our show, like all the stuff in the agency is filmed on the same day. So then if you're doing that same day, but it's a month down the road, sometimes people just forget or they have reference pictures or, you know, people just make little mistakes. And then it seems you're like, this is crazy. How did no one catch this? But if you film them a month apart, you just have no idea. We can't remember everything. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. I took a photo of myself for reference sometimes because I would Always. <laughs> um, where's my next one? What was it like filming all around Toronto? Like, that's my bucket list. Like, I really want to go so bad. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I can't even leave the country right now. So. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Toronto. You know what? I think, like... 
as a viewer, I thought that we did very well in showcasing Toronto for what it was and what it had to offer. And I thought, we always used to say that, uh, that Toronto was like the third character. because it was like Shade, Angie, and Toronto because Toronto got so much screen time. But I feel like we really made our city look beautiful and like showed so many different parts of it for everyone. And like, that was exciting for us too because a lot of the time Canadian, or not, I mean, just... Anything that's filmed here, you don't use it as Canada. And we had all the Canadian street signs. Like, we didn't change anything. Everything was what you see if you come to Toronto. So I feel like that was kind of like a, a lovely support of the city for once. Yeah. Now everyone's doing it. I don't think anyone would doubt it, would he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be just... Everyone would be like, what is going on here? You're just people... <laughs> What was the most challenging scene to film? <laughs> oh, the most challenging scene. Oh, dear. You know, oh, dear. Like, I'm sure there was a lot of ridiculous things that happened. And sometimes we had, we couldn't stop laughing or just some of the things we did were so ridiculous. Like the octopus episode. There was just so many ridiculous things working with Ennis Esmer we're like always laughing we can't look each other in the eye and sometimes we just stare right here but like if you want to you know really like realistically the one that was the most difficult scene was the last scene because we went to work that day and they wrote a new scene and they gave it to us and I just knew that was the end of our show I swear I knew I was never late in five years. We already talked about being late. I was never late in five years for work ever. Not once. I was always early. I never cried at work in five years. Not once. But that day, I read the scene. I saw what, like, what Shade and Angie were saying to each other in that last scene, and I just bawled my eyes out. I couldn't stop crying. I was like in the parking lot crying, and the producer's like trying to calm me down. And I was like, this is it. Our show's over. You guys said we weren't over. And they're like, we're not over. We're not over. And I was like, I can't say these words. Our show's over. And then Jason and I, swear to God, we're like crying. Like in the scene, had to stop and like compose ourselves and just be like, okay, we can do this. And I just knew it was like the end of our show. But then everyone said not to worry about it because it wasn't the end of our show. Yeah, but that I scene was, was very hard. I was crying. Like I was bawling my eyes out so much. But I was also kind of angry at the same time because we were just, I was just like, Shanji, Why? Because they, they never really got together after all that time, and everyone wanted that. <laughs> never, like, there's no payoff at the end of that. It's like, it, ah, yeah, just, I just hated, I didn't hate it. I just had this sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach that our show was done, and that this was it. I was like, if we say these words, we're wrapping up our show in a neat little box and being like, we're done. There's your end you're looking for. Yeah, I remember when it was announced and it was just like, what? Like, no, like they can't Us do too. That. We didn't know it was happening. We were like shocked. Yeah, it deserves better. It should come back. Definitely come back. Um, I realized the movie. I'm rooting for it. We tried. We, we, we tried this. I think we did a petition. I don't know. <laughs> How hard was it filming The Mirror Maze? I think I should probably say it was really hard or I should, you know what? There's so many things that are answers that are better than the truth. It was really easy. <laughs> and it's just one of those movie magic thing, you know what I mean? Behind the scenes. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like what you saw on the screen. So because of angles and everything, we had to hit a mark, but you know, that's all we actors ever do is try to hit that taped T where you stand and make it look natural. And there was just like certain points I had to hit so that the camera could see me. And the camera was in, like they had drilled out a little hole in the mirror at certain points. So the cameras could see where we, where we were, but like, it wasn't scary or anything when you're there because everyone's just on the other side of the wall. <laughs> It really was, yeah. I wish I, I wish I could say it was like very difficult and interesting, but it wasn't. Because Jason and the camera, our cameraman, just talked me through the whole thing. Stop! Turn around! Oh God, there he is! He's got a gun. <laughs> that was yeah. so, that, 
that episode honestly that so was emotional. A great episode yeah that was you know what now that you mention it that episode was great that was a great cliffhanger angie getting shot what a great ending to a season yeah i was like don't do a gray's anatomy don't do a gray's anatomy because that was a great oh let's not even start with gray's oh <laughs> you're a fan i think the one of the best television i've ever watched was the one when george and izzy in the elevator and he was remember this oh yeah. right yeah that episode killed me. I've seen every episode of Grey's Anatomy. Yay! Yay! Yep. I'm, I'm not going to even bring up Lexi. Oh, please don't. My heart still breaks. Oh, Lexi. Oh, let's not talk. We can't talk plane crashes. No, Lexi. I can't believe it. They're all gone. It's terrible. Oh. Easiest scene to film. These are so basic. You guys are terrible, honestly. There were 60 episodes. I can't remember half this shit. Um, <laughs> like realistically, if you're like in terms of like easiest scenes to film, logistically, not realistically, logistically, anything in the car. Yeah. So all of our car scenes, we film them all on a Saturday. And we get our Starbucks and we go sit in the stupid car and Jason and I just spew words all day long and laugh. Like it was the easiest thing. Mind you, we're working on a Saturday. Yes, we work six days a week, but still anything in the car was just like, didn't have a thing to worry about. You know what I mean? It was the exact same thing every time, the same people, they'd sit on the other side of the car and the monitor behind the cameras and we'd all have a grand old time. I always thought them scenes would be really hard to film, but then again, they would be hard if I tried to film one. <laughs> um, what was it like directing an episode? Hmm. You know what, in retrospect, it's weird. My only other analogy is this. I had a baby and in the first three months I didn't enjoy having a baby because I was so worried about that baby because she was so little and fragile. And I wish I could go back and enjoy those three months when she was first born. So I was nervous. Same thing as directing. I wish I could go back and like myself into it more because I was like very nervous. Not while I was not at work, but every night I went home and it was like super high anxiety. And I, I would like, my hands would shake and I'd go through all my on my prep work for the next day and be like, you've got this. And it just, I didn't relax into it, which I wish I would have relaxed into it more. However, I was given a great opportunity and I'm glad I didn't take that lightly. So obviously some sort of anxiety comes with that. And it was my first time and I didn't really feel like I was ready, but looking back, I'm like, I knew way more than I thought I did. And it, it was a lot, there's a lot of moving parts, but I actually knew what I was doing. And I wish I would have had that calmness and been like, you got this. But then like a million things went wrong too. So it's like one of those things. Yeah, I've tried directing that. I don't think I'll ever do it again, ever. And it wasn't it's even my funny. job. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We it's weird. Like I said the same thing. I said the same thing and I'm like, no, I'm, I'd be a good director. I'm good at directing. I love actors. I've been an actor for 20 plus years, 25 plus years, 30. Oh gosh, let's not do the math. Um, And like, I feel like, I do love it, but it's like so much responsibility that you, it's, you almost lose your stress because the day's on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that makes work not as fun. And like, when I go to work as an actor, I'm like, woo, like everything's crazy. Things are easy. And I like, like my place in the wheel, that little cog that doesn't have the weight of the world on your shoulders. And a director has the weight of the world on their shoulders. And so that's a lot, you know, it's a lot to put yourself in, but also, if it's somebody else's, like, I think directing your own work is totally different, too, because it's your baby. But directing other people's things is difficult. And then you have a panel of people you have to answer to. And it's just like stress. I have a low stress life. I don't know. Directing stressful. So yeah. yeah, directing can be very nerve wracking. In like Producing, too. <laughs> producing is horrible. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. I've done that in the last yeah. year. And I absolutely can't Awful. Stand awful i did Great. too a short film you're like oh this will be easy and you're like this is ruining my life why do i have 700 yes. emails and a million decisions to make and then a thousand people to beg money from like it's just too much it really is 
begging money is like the money part though that's the worst right thing. and like calling in favors to everybody you know for everything yeah. like it's just i can't i can't <laughs> yeah I, I somehow have no choice in it but i'm just gonna go with it and hope for the best it's gonna be great you're gonna be great how didn't i know that you could sing like absolutely like so amazingly well no i can't i can't now for the record i did go to musical theater school like i went to school for musical theater so i've studied music theory i do understand music i have sang in dinner theaters i've sang in musical theater things i hate singing in front of people it makes me cry and want to throw up so i generally don't do it and like i used to go to karaoke because it was fun but like there's times where I'm like, well, my throat will be clenched up and I'll want to cry on stage in front of people at karaoke. Like, how weird is that? Anyway, so that was not live. I got to record that in a studio. <laughs> so I was lip syncing to my own voice. Yes, but it was like, it sounded a lot more polished because it was from a studio. And I hate singing in front of people, but thanks. <laughs> yeah I showed him the videos last night yeah. and he was like whoa I was <laughs> I was stunned I was like I did not know you could sing like that wow well like you know it's not the best Mariah Carey out here like it's passable to work yeah I'm like that I won't sing in front of people half the time now like I just keep quiet but people told us I couldn't sing so I shut up for years but apparently it's I weird. Sing. I feel like singing singing is like a very vulnerable thing to do. It's very odd. I feel like you're like exposing your soul somehow. It's very weird. Definitely. I don't know. I mean, I've done so many things in front of people. Why is singing the one that I'm that makes me nervous? Who knows? Yeah. I know. It's like illogical. I mean, I find it like I can sing other people's songs, but as soon as I go and try and sing that oh, one, it just goes totally wrong. Falling. Yeah. Just cry. Just tears. I'll sing your song. Send them over. I've literally got my uke right here. Cause I've been ah, singing. I have a ukulele here too. No way. <laughs> yeah. Can you play it? Well, hold on. Yes. Hold on. There's also, look, there's a piano right there. Oh, wow. Oh, oh wow. Well, Can you play a piano? I'm a musical family. I play piano very badly and I wanted to be good, but um, you have to practice every day and I just don't have the patience. I'm, yeah. You know what? I've played since I was really young, but I just, you know what I mean? Like, if you don't practice all the time, it's like a language. You just lose it. Yeah. I'm not the lose it part. Yeah, I haven't lost ukulele. I stopped playing it for a long time, and then I'm back to it, and I'm now composing things all the time for some reason, and I'm like, stop. I love it. I love the ukulele. That's great. I literally done that on the back, and I kind of regret it. I painted uh, all of it. No, it's pretty. It's coming up, though. That's the issue. <laughs> no regret oh it's peeling no. yeah kind of disappointing <laughs> are you scared of heights like Angie is I could tell I... Like, I just knew so so wait before I say yeah let's all remember I did stand on the edge of the CN Tower at the edge yeah. walk and didn't freak out I was literally cool as a cucumber so everyone <laughs> calm down but I will tell you when I first met my husband, the first year of dating him, he said he thought I was not afraid of anything until we went on vacation and tried to climb up a very small tower to a look off. And I started crying <laughs> because the stairs were see-through <laughs> and I told him not to touch me and couldn't move. I literally get paralyzed with fear and get vertigo. It's not my proudest moment, but yeah, I hate Height. I don't know why. My mom says it's because she climbed the Eiffel Tower stairs when she was pregnant with me, but that's not even true. She wasn't pregnant with me. So, yeah, I hate heights so much. Despite actually you do, I was, yeah, I was being, I was literally a cheerleader, the one that they threw up in the air, and I was scared of heights. Like that's the weird thing. And it's, it's okay. So here's the thing: Are you scared? Like I am always, I'm always more scared of like man-made objects that are high but like I could probably stand on the edge of a cliff easier does that make sense like the yeah. nature things don't yeah. I don't know why 
But like anything that's sort of like concrete, man-made, I'm like, oh dear, I'm gonna die today. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds like that movie, the Fall thing that we watched. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't see that. Is it, it is, good? Oh, Honestly, I was lying there in is. bed, like so numb because I just it was like, like not too real. Even though it was kind okay, of- maybe I'm gonna watch that because I saw it and I was like, that looks terrifying. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. Um, sidebar. I see you on Netflix no okay it's trending over here it's like the number one horror thriller on even though it was made in 2019 of 2023 it's like the number one and it's like everyone's talking about it so just thought maybe I gotta watch it I don't know if we get it that's the thing we don't always get everything so yeah true true yeah, I we mean, have different we had, ones. Yeah, we had we had ages for private eyes because they would only stream it on like the paid, expensive services, so you couldn't get it anywhere else. Oh, those jerks! Yeah, how to use this special place that you stream everything from? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> yeah, it's currently unavailable pretty much everywhere, so it's kind of awkward to watch again. Well, that's it's, terrible. I know it's so bad for them like why do they do that to us all the time we always get punished I know what was your favorite episode <laughs> it's hard. oh my goodness mm, you know what when I think back when I think back I would probably say well there's two one would be the first episode because it kind of established our whole show. And I look back and I feel like we were children. Like we were such strangers and we didn't know each other and we didn't know what the tone of the show was going to be. Like we, 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 it was just like, we were like babies. We were like newborns in that one. That's what I feel when I see it. So I love that one because it holds a special place in my heart. Cause it was the very first episode and it works. You know what I mean? It just like established everything. And it was like, oh, it was so good. If I had to pick a second one, it would be A Star is Torn. And that was the episode about Tiff. And I got to wear some very pretty dresses. But then I also got to kick some ass in a fight scene. And I was waiting for that. Angie kicking ass in the fight scene. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That episode was great. Nothing better than just fight scenes. I've got to do one of them soon, don't they I? Are entertaining. Like... You, you, you do. Really? Yeah, there is one yeah. Special, yeah. Oh, and God. I made it's... sure to rate it so it was e- a bit easier for you. Yeah. So it's not a lot of action. I said, you know, I'm not going to make a d- jump through a window. I made it so it's a bit of a, a, bit of a tussle, but it's you're still going to have to be a bit physical, especially with Shinra. So fun. And it's also fun how it, like, like how the camera sells everything. And like, then once you put the sound effects in, you're like, oh man, this is amazing. Cause it sometimes yeah. even feels silly when you're doing it. Please, I would like to see it. So you'll have to send it to me. Yeah, I'll try if we get that far. I mean, we've only <laughs> shot, how many scenes? Like three, One, four? One, two, three, about five, I think. No way. What are you guys making? Um, it's called Suspicious Minds. I actually got the idea after Private Eyes because I just I like that that was named after a song. So I was like, you know what? I have to name one after a song. And yeah, it's kind of about secret agents in a fictional agency trying to track down a killer who, well, what they think is a killer who's just came from America and they've tried to escape. So yeah. Sweet. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know where I got the idea from. Not a clue. <laughs> it just happens every so often, and I'm like, "Oh no, we will go again." There's another script I've got to write. Wishing you guys the best of luck with that, because it sounds awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, where was it? What storyline would you have liked to see play out? Hmm. Who did we kill off? Oh, nobody. Oh, yeah. my dad. We killed off my dad. You know? Mm-hmm. In the first season, we really dangled like some sort of mysterious backstory with Andy's dad. And I felt like there was like the key that was hidden and the box and like all these things. And I really felt like there was going to be some interesting Angie's dad storyline there. But it just didn't go anywhere. 
Yeah, it was kind of a shame. Like when I was watching like earlier, you saw like her thinking about like his office and stuff like that. And yeah. it's nothing like it would have been nice yeah. to see flashbacks. I know. And then I was like, it's funny because who doesn't love a good flashback episode? Exactly, definitely. And even that's how they know Mazari and Angie know each other because their dads were both police officers. And like, you could have gone back in the past. Mind you, we got cut short. I mean, I'm sure season eight, they were probably definitely going to do flashbacks. Uh, what was it like working with Jason? Because my mom will want to know this. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> I've been saying that literally for seven years. And I'm like, meh, he was all right. Uh, uh, Jason is the best. Like, actually the best. I will get verklempt if I think about it too much. It was my first time like being a lead on something of this size. You know what I mean? It's like a huge show. And he was so good to me. I can't even begin to tell you how how wonderful of a partner it was to have him like leading me, helping me, doing all of the things. He is like the funniest guy. He knows everything about the business. He's directed, he's produced, he's an actor. He's been in this business a gazillion years. He knows everything and he has the best attitude. So you go to work every day and you laugh. Everyone laughs. Every crew that he's ever been a part of, lucky to have is Jason Priestley. He literally makes everything better. I'm not just saying that. Anyone will tell you that. He's so great to work with. He's hilarious. And it was like, I'm so sad. We're still all so sad. I just saw him. What is it? We're in April second we uh i just saw him in nashville in december because i went to a supernatural convention there and that's and i saw him and i felt sad then even i'm oh. just so sad that our show is over we had such a good time <laughs> well i can like totally ignore the next question because it was like was it a choice for the show to end which is obviously a no <laughs> it was uh, someone's choice yeah <laughs> Somebody made that choice. You want to know something and I should, someone made that choice. And and I don't want to say anything disparaging against wh whoever made that choice because we had five wonderful, wonderful years. And we're so grateful. Like I'm so grateful that we had that, but someone decided it was time for it to end. And none of us knew that that was happening. So we were very much blindsided. The producers were blindsided. We were blindsided. We had no idea. We thought we were going to go for another season. Absolutely. I think the writer's room was open. Like we were just ready to go back to work. So mm -hmm. yeah. That answers the next question. Cause it was like such an open ending as well. So it was kind of like, you kind of expected more, but you just, I think, I don't know. I don't know if that decision had been made at that point. So I think looking back now, they left it it was such an open-ended it was open-ended to season five because I don't think the decision had definitively been made that we were canceled or coming back I think they were still debating it and yeah. then they could go either way right and it was yeah. just a way to yeah wasn't well, a very strong ending actually in retrospect because if you were going to end the show you probably would have done something yeah to wrap it up better Definitely. I mean, I always think about endings and I've seen quite a few and it's right? just like some of them literally just got left on a permanent cliffhanger for like life and you just never know yeah. what's going to ever happen. No, and, and then it's going to haunt you for the rest of your life. Yeah, I, I just like, oh, it's just so annoying. I would literally never do that. I'd rather like end my seasons if I ever write them on a certain thing. So then, yeah, anything can Thank happen you. in the future. So there's no loose ends. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate Definitely. that. Yeah. I just always think ahead for some reason. I'm really thinking of far, far Don't end up like private eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was good, so quality writing. Can't be said for every single show these days, so. Uh, mm, true. We're not going to get into that debate because mm. we've had it so many <laughs> times recently. Yeah, that's another episode. Um. Why do you think Shanji never happened? No. I mean, 
mean, I don't think Shanji ever happened because I think that that would have been the end of the show. I think that was always the ending. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the minute Angie and Shade get together, that's what you mean, right? Yeah, that was the ship yeah. name. The minute, the minute that Angie and Shade get together officially, the show's done. Like, it ends. And I feel like we all knew that from the beginning. Because the will they or won't they and the little other girlfriends, other boyfriends, everything going around, like, that's what made it interesting. And I feel like once you get them together, the, the dynamic just changes too much. It's just too weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like the end of the X-Files right now because of it, the Right? However, I mean, our, I think the writers, our writers did have some interesting things some interesting things written, like funny, quirky, shade, Andy things, if they were together, sneaking around, like not telling anyone else about it. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe that would work. There was all these ideas floating around to make it work. But I feel like the true moment that there's a Shanji show's done, but the show's done anyway. So I guess none of that matters. <laughs> what do you miss about the show? Going to work and getting paid to laugh. Um, that's a pretty good gig, no? Yeah, it is. Like, I've never had so much fun at work. Behind the scenes, literally loved going to work every day. That's pretty good. Um, that's a great life when you can go to work and laugh and love your job. So there's that. But I think it's also like, and I feel this way about other shows. Like, I get sentimental about shows coming to an end because those characters are gone. They're just gone forever. And, like, things affect you so much. And I feel like it's kind of sad because they'll never know what happened to them. You know what I mean? So there's, I miss, I miss what could have been. I miss the future. I miss their futures that will never be. You never know. I mean, the amount of shows that were, like, like Criminal Minds, I bald my eyes. I was thinking it was over. And then, oh, two years later, it's coming back. What? Really? Yeah. Thanks. Weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, definitely. They just keep bringing everything back. Everything you thought they was do. over. Never over. So true. Wouldn't be surprised if in two, three years they announce, oh, by the way, we're doing this one-off special episode. Let's do it. I'm in. I'm free. Did you take anything from set as a souvenir? Yeah, because I've heard like little stories here and there. I don't know how true they are of like every time like a show ends, actors tend to take something. No, like, okay, let's remember one thing. When season five ended, we all thought we were coming back for season six because they said, you're coming back for season six. So we just walked out of our studio, mm -hmm. said bye to everyone and thought that we would be back in the next year. So no, I didn't take anything. And I don't really know what I would have taken in retrospect. I've thought about this because other people have asked me this if I took anything. And I'm like, what would I have taken that would symbolize anything? But I didn't. However, I do actually have something. Now, I didn't take it. I didn't take it from set, but I have Angie's watch. And in the show, it's Angie's dad's watch that she wears. So I guess there's that. It's now on a lay for his questions. <laughs> okay, so first up, with all the back and forth between the characters in just absolute hilarious banter was any of that improvised i i okay i don't want to say yes because if i say yes then i'm taking credit for anything that was funny and i'm not taking credit but i will say we were very open to improvisation so it was very structured we had our script but like nobody cared if we threw in other things Nobody cared if we went on a tangent or something else. Like, they would always entertain that and laugh. The cameras were always still rolling. You know what I mean? Like, our yeah. we had a, our writers were on site in a different building, and they were all there, but no one was overseeing every day. Like, you could change lines or throw in something else if you thought that was funny, and it was all very welcome. So, we'll say it was collaborative. No, we won't. I'm, that's <laughs> The writers wrote everything funny. Nothing but bad, some of it maybe. Like I love when yeah, just... I love when sets are like and people on set are like so flexible like that because that's what I always allow on mine. I'm like, if you don't yeah. know the script, I don't care. Like I can't even say anything. <laughs> I haven't looked at mine. 
Yeah. So, and like, you know, if some things work or some things don't work, if sometimes, sometimes I, I think, uh, okay, there was Tapakega Daily. Wow. I can't believe I remember the name of that episode. Wow. It was the frat episode when we go, I don't even know. I don't remember anything about the episode except it was the frat episode and we went to a frat party. But I know that I walked into an auditorium and I had to whisper something in this guy's ear and they made me whisper like 12 ridiculous different lines. <laughs> and everyone was just throwing out ideas. Say this, say, and I filmed every single one of them. Some of them being like terrible that you will never be able to show on primetime television. And yeah, and I don't even remember what, I wish I remembered what line we ended up using. It would be a better story if I remembered more of what I'm talking about. <laughs> but the point is, it was collaborative. People were like throwing out things they thought would be funny. Like anybody that was around was doing it and we shot it. So it is fun. I think that magic things happen when that happens, you know? Yeah. I That's just a good way to something. have. Oh my God. Well, I remember. I can't believe you were in Birmingham in the UK and I did not have a clue. Like I would have done anything and traveled all the way down there. I was just, it's funny because I was just there. Oh, I guess it was last year now. Yeah. yeah. I went to the Supernatural Convention in Birmingham. It was my second time being in Birmingham. Um, my, my husband's first time being in the UK. And I also just worked, a, I just finished a Christmas movie like mm -hmm. last week. So I just did a Christmas movie with two guys from Manchester and they schooled me on, cause I thought I could do a pretty good British accent, but apparently. Go on, you know. go on, literally <laughs> do choice. that. Well, you guys have so many different regions and dialects. Like uh, everyone speaks differently. It's like as, as a Canadian, North American, like I don't hear the, the difference, but when they explained it, I was like, oh, I really do hear the difference. Yeah, we were so worried that because I've done loads of live streams and loads of people couldn't understand the accent. So we were kind of worried. <laughs> I always want to know funny. what I sound like from the other, like from someone else's perspective. Yeah, I don't know. It's like there's so many different, like people say a British accent. What does that mean? Like that there's like hundreds, I, I feel like. I don't know. My best friend's right? going to be very satisfied here in that because. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Yeah. I'll probably sound like a, the Swedish chefs from Blimmin' Muppets, just rah, 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 rah. <laughs> Lucky for me, I can do pretty much a lot, every accent, so I just practice them really? all. Really? Yeah, I'm, I've oh. currently got to speak American for my next short film, so. Let's hear it. I just speak American all the time in the house, and people have no idea. I even spoke American to an American, and they were like, you do realize that would take so long for somebody to learn. And I'm like, yeah, I know. That was so good. That was so good. <laughs> like really good. I can do New York or, or I used to be able to. I used to do New York all the time, but then I just kind of stopped. Oh, I was very impressed with that. Thank you. Lee can go back to his question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what What is your favorite thing about Angie? Oh, her sarcasm. I always go back to that. I just thought she was so funny because she was so sarcastic. And yeah, I did really, really good humor there, you know? Like, I know the show was lighthearted and stuff, but it, it, I, I still, there's still Angie things that make me laugh, even like small, ridiculous things. I watch it. I was like, she's funny. That's it. Yeah, our comebacks are just hilarious. Just <laughs> watching the first episode again, because for some reason I watched it last night, it woke up today and I was like, I need to watch it again for some reason. <laughs> Just the little comeback she makes whenever he says anything. It, it, it's his face after. He's, he's always like kind of shocked. Like, did, did, did she just say that? What? <laughs> so were you and Jason friends after the show? Yeah. I still see him. Whenever he comes to town, he comes to my house for dinner. And when I went to see him in December, 
Um, cause I, uh, I did another supernatural convention in Nashville. So I went to his, I went to his house there. And then whenever he's in town, we see each other. Aww. We're buddies. We that, still talk awesome. all the time. I know it's so sad. It's literally so sad, but also nice. Like it's nice. It's funny because I feel, I feel like you hear a lot of the negative stuff and not the great stuff. Um, like I remember there was always rumors. Was it bones? There's just rumors about like leads not getting along with each other. And like Jason and I genuinely got along so well. And I don't know how, I don't know how you'd go to work and not get along with your co-star and, and, and make a show where you're supposed to be so close. Do you know what I mean? Like I just, sometimes I would envision, like you'd hear stories about, about co-stars hating each other. And I'm like, how do they do that? Like, I know it's acting, but like, how do you go to an environment where you just don't get along and like, imagine that's very fun i think that's probably hell but yeah yeah, we were genuinely friends like we hung out on the weekends (laughs) i went to thanksgiving at his family's place the last season my family and his family had thanksgiving together so if that's any indication yeah we were really good friends he's he's wonderful yeah we know of some stories (laughs) specifically the x-files about co-stars not getting on but there was right? some drama behind the scenes that nobody can clarify for some reason. I know, and I just, like, I wish we could be a fly on the wall to see how that even works. Like, how do they go to work and, like, I don't know. It's weird. I've never really had that experience of, like, having a terrible time at work with someone, like, because of an outside factor, like, uh, somebody. I don't know. I just can't even imagine. I wouldn't be good with that stuff. I would just cry. Yeah, I think I've had some like that, and it was just like hated it. Yeah, hated it so much. Stressful, right? Yeah. Just no. Yeah. And you also, like, uncomfortable. exactly, you feel uncomfortable, and like, there's also the other side of like, we're. I don't mean to say we're just making movies, but like, we're not doctors without borders here, saving lives somewhere. We're doing something that's supposed to be like fun and entertaining. We're in the entertainment world, so. It shouldn't be like hell on earth going to work, you know? Like it's just seems like a lot. Anyway. Yeah. Lee. Continue. Is there anyone you would like to work with in the future? Like I mean anyone at all. Oh, it's so tough. I mean, obviously there's thousands of people I'd like to work with. Um I'd like to work with Sean Piller, who is my executive producer on Prime Guys again, because he's the mm. best. And Jason Priestley, yeah. If we could all get back together, that would be so fun because we had a great time. Now, um, let's talk in an unrealistic world. Uh, Kate Blanchett, my favorite actress. I think she's magic. Um, I used to love Judd Apatow movies and thought they were funny, and I was like, oh, I want to be in one of his movies. Um, this is all unrealistic. Um, Who else would I like to work with? Right now, it's all Pedro Pascal. Yep. Last yep. of Us, have you seen that? Hey, Not hey, yet. I haven't. I've played the video games, but I haven't. So seen have I. Yet. Oh, okay. Well, I saw the series <laughs> and he's everything. He is everything. Um. Oh, I don't know. There's like so many. It's like funny when you try to think of things and you can't think of a single name. That's what's happening to me right now. I'm like, I literally probably have a list of a million people I'd like to work with. All of mine are on my IMDb in the favorite section. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, oh, see, that's smart. Wait, what are yours? Say some. You? (laughs) Totally going off the subject, even though... Because I wrote a TV show, which I'm rewriting right now, and I literally wrote a character for you. Okay, Lee. <laughs> Switch it up from Private Eyes to another show that I originally knew you from. Just, I need to know, what was it like working on the Supernatural episodes? Because I've loved Supernatural since 2016, ever since I first discovered it. Okay. Well, I just saw Jensen and when I was in Nashville for the first time in over 10 years. We were looked at each other and we're like, whoa. He was like, hey. I'm like, hey. I, I was like, as old as we, like, do we look old? He said we didn't look old, but I know he was being polite. Um, honestly, working on that show was amazing. First off, 
they have a gazillion dollars because it's a U.S. show and I'm Canadian and we do things very differently in Canada. There's like never enough money to make anything. But that show was like wild and huge and amazing. Um, they were so nice to me and they were so funny. And it was kind of the same feeling, I guess. It's like, I don't know. I get maybe it's like a preconceived notions of what you're going into that you just think that like people that are kind of like stars are not going to be welcoming or funny or kind. And they really were all of those good things. So that was unexpected. And then it was just so fun to go to work. The only thing that was tough was we shot a lot of nights. And I hated working nights. But like, that's when the demons come out. You can't be doing things in the daytime. You know what I mean? But yeah, that yeah. show, I feel like I just went on a convention. I hadn't seen these people in a million years. Some of these people I'd never seen or never met before ever. They were all so wonderful and funny and hilarious and gracious and welcoming and like all of the good things. So everyone that was anything to do with Supernatural, are they're just lovely human beings also, which like no wonder the show did so well. I mean, obviously the guys are like funny and handsome and endearing and all of the things, but like everything around them was like goodness. You know what I mean? It was like a good vibe, everything. Yeah, I have seen some kind of behind the scenes, like bloopers as well. And it just looks like it would be such a fun experience working on that show. Yeah. Because it may be all like dark and drama, but as soon as they yell cut, it's just jokes and laughter. And it's like, oh, that would be so amazing to be there. That be That's set. what it was. So true. That's exactly what it was. And like anything like that, then remember, I like, it's just not very stressful. Everyone just kind of loves going to work and doing their job. Like it's, Changes everything. Yeah, it was exactly like you see. <laughs> Another question I had is, uh, was um, is Jensen Eccles as fun and goofy as uh, the show portrays him? Because there is a one episode where the sh it ends, and then it's just him lip syncing to Eye of the Tiger. Absolutely, he's so <laughs> like that. I mean, you could look that up anywhere on the internet for sure. He's very goofy and funny. Yeah, they're so, well, they look like models, but they're just like goofy and funny Texan boys. I don't know. Like, they're great. They're, they, they have done very well, and it's all very deserved. Yeah, oh, honestly, that show. One of my friends actually named her kid Jensen after Jensen. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's all the questions I've got because I had a few, but they've already been answered. So, yeah, I sent you my yeah. questions. So I know. Um, so I've got career questions. If you could join the cast of any TV show, what would it be? Like a TV show that's on now, or a TV show of the past? Any. There's okay. There's a lot of TV shows. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw things out. First of all, the show that I've seen more than any other show that exists, like that I know every single episode to in the entire world is Seinfeld. I've seen every episode a thousand times. Um, join that? No, just throwing that out there. Um, I used to say Hawaii Five O just so I could live in Hawaii. I've never actually seen the show, but I just think it would be really nice to film a series in Hawaii. That sounds lovely, doesn't it? We have Canadian winters. They're very cold here. Blah, blah, blah. I loved Modern Family. I would have liked to have been part of that show. That show killed me. Um, Saturday Night Live? Dream Job? Perhaps? Maybe? Back in the day. I don't know. I guess the Oh, I'm holding out for like Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. Golden Girls was a bunch of old ladies. Yeah, when they yeah. do the remake of that, I'm looking forward. That'll be my future. <laughs> <laughs> What's your advice for auditions? Oh, gosh. You know, I would say relax and be yourself, but I feel like we're not really doing... We're not doing in-person auditions anymore here. Are you guys doing them over there? We did them, yeah. We did, yeah. Okay, Whatever. so we haven't started doing in-person auditions at all. Um, but I'll pretend that we are. 
and have fun. It'd be interesting. I don't know. That's it, right? I mean, I always used to think that I was nervous for auditions until I was a reader. And then I realized that so many good people are doing the same thing, but different things. So I always thought you could be good or bad, but it's not that at all. It's that everyone's great. They're just all great in a different way. And that took a lot of pressure off because all you can do is be yourself. All you can offer is what you have to offer. And you just have to like go in the room and have a good audition because I auditioned for the people that made Private Eyes five years before Private Eyes ever got made. I screen yeah. tested for a show called Haven and I didn't get it. But guess what? They remembered me. So sometimes you're doing an audition and it's not even, doesn't matter if you get it or not because it's going to matter in three years when those people are casting something else. You know? Yeah. yeah. I just think we have to be all optimistic about it all. I've never really auditioned for anything, to be honest. I've, it's I've very thought... nerve wracking. And people, it can like, be, yeah. I think the thing is the nerve wracking that people self sabotage because they, I always used to remind myself this every time that a director and a producer is in a room auditioning, they're looking for you to be the next person. They're looking for you to be what they want. When you walk in, they want you to be the character. They want you to make that character come to life and make the scene live. And that's what they're looking for. They're not there to be against you. They're there so that they can find that character. So if you just remember that everyone's rooting for you in the room, then it's not as scary. But I've seen people go in and like, you know, nerves get the best of so many people in auditions. You just have to remember everyone's on your side. What way do you find the easiest to learn lines? Uh, I don't have a problem learning lines. I never have. I memorize things super easy. I can memorize an entire day of scenes in 20 minutes before I started work. That is a party trick. It does not make you a good actor. It is a party trick. It doesn't mean I'm a good actor. It just means I can memorize things very easy. Um, I have friends that won't do an audition if it's due the next day because they need to live with their lines longer. And that's just, you know, that's all very individual. If I really can't remember lines or like it's very, you know, like hospital jargon or lots of scientific things with things that I'm not used to, um, I'll write it out because my brain, it'll sear into my brain if I write it down. That's a good idea. That is. Yeah. I haven't heard that one before. Always. Always write it down. Do you think and draw if you're no oh. it's fine. No, it's fine. no, it's fine. Well, I was just thinking I was thinking the other day how weird it is because when you do a scene, you always know what the other person's gonna say. And then it was funny because I had an audition and I wrote out only my lines. And I'm like, well, this is weird because you always know when the other person's going to stop talking because then it's your turn, turn to talk and when they're finished, what they're going to say. And I wrote it only my lines. And I was like, well, this is weird. What if I approached auditions not knowing when they were done talking, not knowing so that I'm actually answering based in like real life on when, you know what I mean? When I think or interjecting at what point and blah, blah, blah. Because I feel like I always have everything so memorized and rehearsed. And I was like, oh, this is a fresh way to do an audition. Writing out only my lines. That is literally so interesting. I've never really thought about doing that. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's interesting too. Because the act of actually writing it and remembering it, that would be more useful than just sitting there going, yes, my line's this, and then the line's this. Right. And line's I know. This. And I was like, oh, you're not like, you're not like, pre-predicting what's going to happen. You'd be like, okay, they're done talking. Now I talk. You're actually, it's alive. I don't yeah. know. I thought of that last week. I had an audition. And that's what I did. I'm not sure if it was worse or better, but it was different. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think drama school is the best path for actors? Oh, dear. I don't know what to answer with this one. I'm a dropout, so... I don't know. I would probably drop out as well. I dropped out of drama before I even started the course. <laughs> Look, here's what I'll say. For some people, I'm sure it's probably great um, because you gain confidence. And here in Canada, like I'm only 
that's because I that's all I have to work from is what I know and that's I don't remember like it's been a very long time I've been in this business but I don't remember what it feels like to be starting out and I don't remember I don't know nowadays what you do to break into the business do you know so I feel like if you've done nothing and you have no experience how do you get an agent where do you start and I do feel like here at least if you go to drama or take acting classes there's like agents will come to the showcase or there's like opportunity that's that that's there um and i think that probably benefits people and confidence and you get to play you get to play in acting school and drama classes before you go out into the real world where you need to book things to pay bills so i'm sure there's that fun stuff there but i am a dropout so don't it doesn't mean you have to go to acting class yeah, I probably wouldn't go back. My experience was pretty horrible, to be honest. Really? Like, Why? Um, let's just say that they had favourites and the favourites got everything easy and handed to them, whereas the ones that they didn't like, they would just give the hardest things to see them fail. And there was this one time where I actually, I think like I had a show and I lost my voice the week before and they were like, well, sing they were like just sing and then I only just got my voice back and they were like well you have to sing now or we're giving it to somebody else so I had to sing with barely any voice and I was that scared that I would fail that I had to and they just trep it all bad and I actually got an exam at the end of it and they refused to give us my certificate to say that I'd passed they literally full out refused and I had it I think I took four or five years to try and get it that's very weird. I will say also on to that is that I feel like there was like always this mentality of theater school where they felt like they had to break you down, to build you up, to create an actor. And I always thought that was very weird. Yeah. And that, mm. that was kind of the mentality I remember. And I also became a dropout because they wouldn't let me work and I was already working on things. And I thought that was weird too. Now they've changed that policy now, I guess, many years ago. But yeah, I don't know. Like school is supposed to be supportive and fun and like uplifting and informative and help you. And that sounds like, that sounds like terrible, actually. Yeah, I remember I'm that. Sorry. I was like talking about, like, because I'd wrote the first ever draft of my script, which is actually the one that's getting made now. And I was like, oh, it's going to get made one day. And they were like, huh, yeah, right. And uh, did I prove them wrong? <laughs> I definitely did. Well, thank you, jerks at acting school, <laughs> for that. Yeah. I dropped out after four months. It was too repetitive. They were teaching stuff I had been learning already for three years. I'm just thinking I had this idea of it's going to be this brilliant thing, but it was just the same as the college I'd went to. And it's just like, okay, then when's it going to start getting interesting? And it, it wasn't. And I was like, I'm not yeah. just going to sit through something I've already, I already know for the last three years just for a showcase. Yeah. So I, that's I, how I, I, I just dropped out. I, I dropped out because the same thing. It's like, I'm already working as an actor. Why would I give up where I am in the industry right now to sit and listen to other people tell me what to do to get to the point where I'm already at once yeah. I graduate? Like, it just seems very weird. Anyways, what I mean, the expression is always be learning. Apparently, I know lots of people that still work with coaches which I find beneficial I do but like I don't know um how good are your accents terrible really I mean not terrible terrible here's the thing I've done them like I've filmed not like you you're good I think that some people are really like great at them and other people I personally not very confident about it. So I always work with a dialect coach. So if I had an audition even, that was like a Boston accent or a British accent, I would work with a dialect coach. Um, I've done Italian, French, and Spanish. I've filmed all those three, but like not for a long period of time, just like smaller parts and pulled them off okay. But like, I'm not great at accents. You're great at accents. Some people are just, Excellent. It was lovely talking to you guys. Yeah. I wish you the best of luck with what you're filming. When is it going to be done? Um, 
I don't know. It depends because I usually have to edit the footage and stuff like that. But if I'm if I've got any luck, things will be coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, you guys. Thank you for Bye. being here. Thank you.